Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you a website that I like to use that's very similar to PowerPoint. And it's called Prezi. P-R-E-Z-I. Prezi. Ideas matter. So this first one I'm going to click on. And I was actually logged in there. But I'm going to pretend like I come in and this is a new site so students have not been on. If they do have information from a previous year or create an account themselves they can just sign, they can just log in here. But I'm gonna sign up for free. So I'm gonna click on this public one which is the first one which is free and I'm going to make a fake login here. Email does not matter if it's not valid. do mine at yahoo.com enter in a password and then just make sure down here you click I agree to the terms of use and I'm going to sign in so now now up here you can see that I'm logged in I just created an account it took me less than a minute to create the, that account now if you want the kids to get on and explore first to kind of show a couple prezies they can search up here for a topic they like. They can flip through. They can play some if they want to watch one. You can click on it. And this one's called Presentation on Presentations. So here it is loading. And once it gets all loaded up, you can kind of flip through it. What makes a Prezi beautiful? I can kind of flip through. It's more than a pretty background. Your Prezi should be a memorable experience. So I'm just going to keep flipping through so you can kind of get an idea what it looks like. So it kind of jumps around. It's just a little bit more eye-pleasing. Now this is one that actually talks about the, the things that Prezi can do for you. And there's the end product. But I flipped through that one real quick. We're actually going to go and I'm going to show you how to create one. So your Prezi's. I'm going to click here to add a new one. And I'll just call this title Practice Description. How to use Prezi. Create new Prezi. So after you create one, it's going to give me an option to just use a blank background or I can kind of pick one of the customized settings for my layout here. So they got a couple different templates. The journey, the big idea, and you can keep on scrolling down. I think it goes through about, it's like about 30 or 40 there. But I'm just going to do a blank one because I want to show just a couple features and then show you an example of a completed one that, uh, that we did. So now up here are kind of your tools. And down here is the path that I'm going to make. So this looks real similar to Microsoft's PowerPoint. So what I'm going to do is I'll just click to add a title here. So I'll just say, call this Gracie. You can move that around. You can make it bigger. You can make it smaller. You can also click if you want to type somewhere else now. So let's say Gracie is a dog. Then let's say I want to add uh, media. Let's add an image here. So from Google Images. So let's search for a dog. So we could add that. Now what's nice about this one is you actually don't have to save the file. You can just flip through here, look for one that you like, and let's say I'll take this guy. So it's still processing. Actually, I'm going to choose a different one. So we'll take this little guy here. Then we click Insert. Now he's loading up. Now I've got a picture of a dog. Now if you want to make him bigger or little you can click the minus sign or like I said to zoom in or out you can crop the image 
if you just kind of want his head there. I'll make him a little bit bigger. So now I've got the title, got the dog, got a picture here. Now let's say I want to add a new frame. And here's something that's important. Here's the home button. So right now I'm at home. I could zoom out. Let's say I want to add another frame. So add frame. And I'm going to pick another circle. Once I pick that, I can just make it right here. And let's say I want to make one that's kind of symmetrical to that one. So I'm going to click on add another frame. I'm going to go with the circle. And there's another frame. And I can kind of move that to make it look more symmetrical. Now over here are my three little frames. So these are almost like slides on a PowerPoint. So let's say I want to work on frame number two here. I can click over here and it's going to zoom in right on that frame. And let's say I want to title this one Family Pets. And I want to change the color of the writing. So let's make it red. Then I can move that. I can make it bigger if I want. And then I can start maybe putting some pet names. So a dog, a cat, and it looks like you have to change the color first before you actually start to type. So if I make it blue now, now it should come out blue, and it does. Cat, then we'll add a rabbit, and there we go. So we got three family pets there. Now if I want to insert another image, and I, I'm just going over like a real quick overview of this for you. So I'm going to go back to Google Images. I'm going to type in cat. And I'm just going to click one of the first ones here so we can keep on moving. So now it's processing that picture. And if it does say no higher resolution image available, that means you'll need to select another one. So this one looks like it's good. Insert. And now this picture is probably going to be way too big to fit in. So I'll click on it. I'll make it smaller. And I'll move it right over by the cat. Then let's say I want another picture of a dog. So let's do another dog. And let's just take this first one here. And there's that no higher resolution again. So I'll scroll down a little bit. I'll pick this guy here. So he's loading up. Got a little German Shepherd. And now he's loaded. So I'm going to click on him once he's processed. And it looks like he's having a little bit of trouble. Oh, no wonder. I didn't click insert. That always helps. I'm going to zoom back in on this page, put that underneath dog, and we'll just leave the rabbit picture blank right now because I kind of want to show you a path before I run out of time here. So here's what the overview kind of looks like. Now we're going to edit the path. So right now I've got three different paths. But let's say I want, number one, I want to see the Gracie. So we got the big picture, and let's say I want to zoom in on the dog. Then I come over to the third frame here, and say we zoom in on family pets, zoom in on dog, zoom in on the picture. 
And I'm just taking these little plus signs and you can move them right to where what you want to be shown. And the last one over here is number eight. We just kind of left that blank. But you can create whatever you want over there. This is just a little practice. Now I'm going to show you what the presentation looks like. So down here I can kind of see what my layout's going to be. First page, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And I'd probably have to edit this a little bit better than what I did. But we're going to present it just so you can kind of see the layout. So this is the first thing they're going to see. Then it's going to zoom in on the dog. And come over here to Family Pets. A dog. Come back out. Then in on the cat. And the blank one that we didn't get to finish. But you can see just how easy it is to create one. Now I'm actually going to show you an example of a some work that was done in my classroom. Now this one here kind of changed the names, but this they picked the layout. They 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 picked a template instead of just doing a blank one. So they kind of have like a little desk here, a little office space. And I'm going to show you what their presentation looks like. So this is what it'll look like when it opens up. So you can see the whole desk and this one is on ratios. And we'll click through here. So they had their names. They actually had a little video there too as well. So it comes on the first one, kind of gives a definition of ratio. Comes down the three different ways ratios can be written. Jumps over here. Realization gives a definition, talks about a rate and a unit rate. Jump over examples, kind of, kind of gives a couple different examples of unit rates and ratios. And that was the end of their little present. But there's just kind of an example of a way that you can kind of work it in. You could do this with any subject, any topic, any age. I found it very user friendly and it's something that the students can actually come up, present it right in the classroom. All they have to do is log in. You don't have to save it to anything. It's automatically saved through the internet. But thanks again for visiting my site and I hope I see you again.